Hey everybody, welcome back to Dungeon Maker here on the World of Madness server. So it's currently kind of dark out. Um, yeah, there's a spider around here somewhere trying to get in, but uh, fortunately I've already blocked off all the exits. So I have no idea if he'll end up getting in somehow, but uh, it will not be via somewhere I've forgotten. I hope. Yeah, the, the place is kind of like still messy. Also, over there is a nether portal now, because I had to go and get some quartz uh, to do a bit of redstone that I'll show you quickly in a moment. Uh, but unfortunately, it dumps me like a thousand blocks away when I come out, so I evidently need to align that a bit. Oh, there's a skelly bulb over there. Ugh. Okay then, enjoy yourself. So, we can see over here that things have left, things have moved around. Most things look pretty much identical, but I've... Uh, Finished half slabbing the floor, so nothing spawns in here, especially with this uh, spot in here, which is fully lit up. But there's also a lever over here, because here is our first mechanism of the dungeon. So, there we go. That's how we get down now. Um, the answer is, you are standing on this, you drop down. If you're standing at any parts of the edges of this 3x3, you uh, hit the vines and are slowed, such that you don't really take any damage. Let me see if I can... Uh, Simulate that appropriately. There we go. Yeah, so you'll take like maybe a half hour. Um, but that then brings us down to our initial entryway corridor. Uh, oh, and I should probably like show off the redstone here because this is pretty neat. Pretty neat. Uh, so the bulk of it is just con is just containing like standard uh, jeb st jeb door style pistonry. Uh, so most of these blocks push out and are then under, are then up directly above the redstone torches, so the pistons extend there. Uh, but then you've got these ones, which are a little bit more complicated. But yeah, And then you get over to here, which is a sort of a, a, a double extender, because that is for the central like part of things, and it gets kind of a bit complicated at that stage. Uh, let me just grab a spare lever, uh, and I shall try and show how this, is, how this uh, looks from inside. Okay, yeah. So that's what it looks like when it's fully closed. Looks pretty good, I dare say. My idea currently is that you'll do something up there, which is just basically very simple. Uh, those who would dare challenge the tomb, whatever. Um, and then just like, you, you flip a switch or you uh, rotate something. I don't know, something I can easily reset, ideally. Uh, the floor will come out here, you'll drop down, and then after a little while it'll reset and close up again. So, that is our first bit of red stone for around here. But the part that we are mostly interested in today is down here, the entry corridor. This is a really important part of a dungeon, because this really sets the tone, it lays the terms by which uh, the players are moving around the dungeon. So it might be a long corridor with lots of doors in the side, as I believe Muffins once uh, once did in uh, one of our like off sessions of D and D. Um, in which case, you can expect there to be different challenges down the different doorways. You can expect uh, there to be diverging branches and that kind of thing. With this one, we need to lay terms more than actually like establish tone, but tone establishing would be good. So the issue with. Uh, the, uh, the the tomb the tomb of Tukar is it is hard it is hard in the most grueling way the most like death by a thousand cuts way so we need to figure out how to make sure that anybody that comes in here regardless of what their armor level is that they have a bad time in this initial corridor that sort of sets the tone and also beats them up in a little bit primarily. Uh, sort of like initially, in initial beatings, if you will. And I have a few ideas for this, but uh, to show them off, we're going to hop over into my test world, where it is a lot easier for me to build stuff because I have access to creative worlds. <laughs> but with that in mind, catch you in a quick moment. Whoop. Right. So here we are in my test world. You can see over here, we've got the uh, the wiring for the entirety of the drop which, yeah, took a little bit to get right. I will link in the description, and ideally I'll post, like, a title statement on the, uh, on the footage now, if I've remembered in the slightest bit, uh, to the tutorial I followed for this, because it's really nice. Really, it's really, like, just, ugh. It's beautiful. Beautiful redstone. Love it. Uh, oh, but there's something I was tinkering with. This is one of the, uh, potential traps for lay down the line. This is specifically from the... 
uh, from the cobalt section of the branches. Uh, but anyways, we need a, a we need something that's actually going to work regardless of what they're using. So the first thing we need to contemplate is do they have fire resistance? If they don't, then there's the first thing that we can do, which is we can eject lava onto them occasionally. This first section is entirely uh, built by the original constructors of the Tomb of Tukar, uh, so it's the Tukar people as opposed to the uh, the kobolds, um, which means it's going to be predominantly trap driven, just cyclical, that kind of thing. It's not going to be uh, something that's tremendously intricate, uh, but it will definitely hurt if you are in the wrong place at the wrong time. So let's start off here and show ourselves just uh, one one particular thing that we could do and if I just get us a wall here there we go and a block there okay so the first thing that we can potentially do just to take that out a bit more there is we can have just a pulse a, a traveling pulse so right now it is impossible to fall into this lava. If we pull this back, it is now possible to fall in this lava. And if this is going on a cyclical kind of thing, if it's going on a clock, then it's entirely possible that these blocks will uh, retract when you are standing on them. I could have that on both sides, uh, but the corridor being three blocks wide leaves us with an additional problem, uh, that being exactly how do we get anyone who just walks straight down the middle. Of course, we could just erase the middle entirely, uh, but that doesn't work quite as well either, uh, because then you're just forcing them to just hobble around. Another thing to take into account is that players are incredibly likely, at least on the World of Madness server now, to have Ender Pearls. Now, they're not allowed, under the rules of using the Tomb of Tukar, to modify the environment. They're not allowed to place torches, they're not allowed to break anything, uh, so they can't use water, for example, to nullify the lava, because, dear heck, that would take me a while to fix. Um, but they are allowed to use things like potions and uh, and 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 ender pearls, which means if they have the slightest view of the end of the top of the uh, corridor here, they'll just ender pearl all the way over to it, and we will not have any kind of initial implications of how dangerous the two or two part is. So, with that in mind, there's a circuit over here as part of the. Uh, as part of the drop that we saw just a second ago, and there's these two pistons here. Now, if we use a similar setup for that, uh, let me just grab myself a uh, yep, uh, some sustained clay there so I can demonstrate this. Uh, let's see, you want to go that way. Da -da -dum, da -da -dum. Okay, and then we need pistons. Two of them. Doop, doop. There. And I think I might have gone this a bit short. Eh, nope, nope, I think it's good. Uh, right, so... I need that and that, and that is 3, 5, 1. Just so I get the timing of this right. So, do, 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 3, 5, 1. Right, and now if we stick a torch in here we can potentially shove something into the center of this entire thing. This is just uh, sticking it out one block, but we can fix that in a post a little bit. Uh, but that allows us to significantly change the dimensions of our actual corridor. We could, as a possibility, uh, have it be that uh, the center is mostly safe, but you're going to have to like weave your way around this to uh, ensure that you can actually get the safest route, and even then, there'll be things like this coming to knock you off. Uh, or, as an alternative, we could have a sort of a ripple. Now, there's a very classical thing of you can have a bunch of pistons triggering in sequences uh, to ensure that an area is locked off it at different stages. So let me just... here we go, four. And just get rid of that one for the time being. Do to do, do and a new redstone again, there we are. Okay. So, bloop, bloop. Yeah. And, do do. Yeah. So, you can have a whole array of these just set up so that they are pulsing in sequence. Such as, like, 
Uh, da -da -dum. Whoop, that's going a bit far back. Whoop. Doop. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Doop, doop, doop. And then that. Really quick, really dirty here. Doop, 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 doop. Okay. And then we just fill that in so nobody can see what it is. And then we have something sort of like that. And we can have something on the other side that's just uh, just copying it as well. And that heavily restricts the uh, the view of the end of the actual corridor. Now, one particularly great thing if we have like if we do this well is that we can make it so that the players don't actually know how long this corridor is. So that means that they might be forced to try and ration uh, their like their their items and whatnot, so that they so that they have to actually like figure out. Okay, I have to use the bare minimum in this corridor because I don't know how long it is, and I have to be really careful to not use things like healing potions, which makes our players more vulnerable. But, uh, yeah, we can do this, but the trouble is, it's rhythmic, so even if I was triggering, like, all but one of these, so if I just inverted the signal, um, we have a problem that once the player knows the right timing sequence, they can just pretty much walk through it entirely, which is not very dangerous. So instead, I think we need a definite repeating pattern, but it has to be one that will actually crush the player at different points. Um, so the player has to figure out where he needs to stand to not fall into the lava as that gets retracted. Oop. Uh, but Meanwhile, he's definitely being crushed. Now, this goes into how armor works, uh, and how different types of damage work. So there's a handful of um, a handful of damage sources that you will always take. Uh, so, for example, armor has no effect, uh, as at least by normal, on potion damage, magic damage. It has no effect on crushing damage, suffocation damage, uh, or falling damage. This only changes once you actually start to enchant gear. Now, of course, we have to take that slightly into account, but there's really, like, not too much that we can m massively do about that. Uh, we just sort of have to do our best to get around it. So, let's see if we can't make this a little bit... a little bit smaller, at the very least. Uh, so that we can ensure that we can actually make this flush with the wall. Because uh, otherwise there's going to be kind of a problem here. Because this ideally needs to be three blocks tall. So I need a three block tall piston extender. Which is um, not easy, suffice to say. So, doop. Okay. So that is two blocks out. That is one block. Like, that is flush with the wall. Uh, I'm going to have to tinker around a bit to try and figure out the proper manner in which to do this, but uh, it should be feasible to make a two block, three block tall piston extender. Basically it's a standard door, that's what we're looking for here, it's a door circuit. And then we can just have those and we can trigger them in batches. So let's see, let's get an example of what we can do by means of, whoop, uh, by means of delays. So, let's take the circuit we had before. So that's uh, 3, 5, and 1. Doop, 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 doop. And then we have our pistons. Okay. And then we trigger. Doop. So we see we have the forward one, the rear one, and then the one in the middle. And then the one in the middle is the last one that actually, like, re actually retracts. So that would mean that uh, if we had a repeating system like this, that knowing the sequence of them wouldn't help you as much. Now, what we can then do is we can stack these along. Doop. And do 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 And let's get, repeat that timing again. We can change this up as much as we like. Okay, and I actually want to make this as isolated as I can from each other so that I can do what I'm thinking of right now. Okay, and that and there, so we can get that. And then 
Once we have that, we can trigger these at different times as well. So, with that, we get them all triggering at the same time, but uh, slightly delayed from each other so that uh, you will probably get caught in them regardless of what you're doing, which is what we want. We don't necessarily want to kill the players here. The ideal is that Toka is that the uh, the Tomb of Tukar is an actually potentially fatal place where you might lose your items and stuff. But uh, we also want to take into account that uh, they're right at the start and killing them right now will be a little bit merciless. And uh, ooh, that is not going to work for this purpose. I want something that doesn't stack, just because I've got more than one line here, so. So where did that hopper go? There you are. There. So we take this out. And this one's a bit of a long timer, but uh, we can see that it's already kind of a problem. Walking through this would be pretty hellish indeed. Especially if we also had uh, our center section as well. We could just be very simplistic with the central section, just have two like pistons, one at the bottom, one at the top, pushing down. Um, but, uh, eh, I don't know. I don't know. So, yeah, I think what we'll ultimately go with is a combination of these systems. So we'll have... Uh, the piston crushers, because suffocation damage applies, at least as long as you don't have protection on your armor, and these, uh, these lava pits at the bottom, which might indeed spell almost immediate doom, uh, although these will probably end up being half-slabbed anyways, so just in case people do actually like fall into lava, they can maybe swim out, I don't know. Uh, Although in this case, if the pistons like these are above this, then you could end up getting locked in even if the pit is still open, which would be pretty amazing, I think. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, more or less it for now. It's a, it, it, it's, a, it's a short episode, but I hope you kind of appreciate the kind of things I had to think of uh, between episodes here now uh, with regards to building this project. And if you have any ideas on how to further enhance the uh, the evilness of this entryway, uh, do let me know in the comments and uh, on Tumblr at the uh, the hashtag DungeonMakerLying, and I will show you next episode what horrific thing I have come up with. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be lovely. <laughs>